Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. Um, I preached uh, a sermon today in the church on the uh, south side of Manchester. And um, so I'm just sharing with you today um, that message. So let's pray before the Lord. Father, we thank you for this day. We uh, thank you for your grace, we thank you for your love, and Lord, we give you the prayers and the glory. And Father, as we read your word today, and as we study your word, we pray that you might be pleased to bless us and encourage us, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. It's good to be with you. If you'd like to turn to uh, Joshua chapter 1, don't forget my website jasonburnspreacher.com jasonburnspreacher.com uh, look at my twitter and facebook and you'll get uh, updates of various things that are happening hopefully we should have a, another website up royal blood ministry website for those who are looking out for my book um, i was just finishing it off last week and my word publishing crashed so I'm hoping to uh, get it sorted out so the book is coming but forgive me if it's uh, a week late it's just the word publishing uh, crashed okay let's look at Joshua chapter 1 it says now after the death of Moses the servant of the Lord it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua the son of Nun Moses minister saying Moses my servant is dead now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I, I give thee to them, even so to the children of Israel. Every place that this sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, for the wilderness of the Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. And as I with Moses, so I will be with thee. And I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which... Uh, Moses my servant commanded thee turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whither thou goest this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night and thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written thereof or thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success have I not, have I not commanded thee be strong and of good courage be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whither thou goest. So I'm going to just share the word. If I have to go out for a minute, it's because someone comes in the house and they might not realise I'm recording and make noise, so I have to go downstairs just to just to let them know I'm preaching. Uh, so if I have to go out for a second, uh, please forgive me. So... <clears throat> The title of the sermon is uh, Be Encouraged, Be Encouraged. And so I'll just, uh, sorry about this. That's better. Should, should have done that at the start. There's a story of a preacher, and this preacher um, had a cottage. Uh, in the country and had a study upstairs and wanted to bring some of his books this is like in the 18th 19th century and wanted to bring his books upstairs so he was carrying his books upstairs and he had some big old tombs big old puritan books and um, his little boy who's like five years old was picked up a book and it was too heavy for him and he began to cry and uh, the father came downstairs and saw his son crying and picked up his son and picked up the book carried them upstairs and that's a picture of the love of God maybe today 
you're feeling overwhelmed, maybe today you're feeling overburdened about something. And I want to tell you right now that God is with you and he loves you. And he'll carry you in the midst of your trouble. If you turn to uh, Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Verse 1 to 3. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fell. Though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war would rise against me, in thee will I trust. Verse 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And you might have, have had a dream many years ago. You've had a dream. And that dream has gone out. Has, has, has not come to reality and it's like a candle that's flickering and the lights just flickering flickering and it's ready to go out well, I want to say today that whatever your dream is keep it alive because God is going to make it shine bright God is with you today he loves you today and the dream that has faded in your life he, he is with you and he will give you strength and that dream will come to be reality so don't lose that vision that you've had whatever that is. So my first point today is be encouraged because God has a plan. Imagine you're going uh, in the countryside on holiday and there's a tour guide that takes you into the mountains. Now this tour guide knows the mountains and has a plan to get from A to B and knows how to do it. But you go a walk in the mountains and you're so confused with all the pathways and all the gullies and valleys and it just seems such a bewildering place to you. But the tour guide knows exactly what he's doing, where he's going and how to get there. He's got a plan. He's done it thousands of times and he knows what he's doing. And in your life, God has a plan. He knows exactly where he's going, what he's doing for you in your life. And Joshua here Moses died and he's got two million people to feed and he's got a war to fight. And God tells him that he's got a plan. It says, verse 3, Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. And he goes and he elaborates in verse 4, From the wilderness of the Lebanon even unto the great river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea towards the going down of the of the sun shall be your coast so the Lord is saying here Joshua you've got all these big problems and issues but look I've given you the land I have a plan it's done I'm with you and God has a plan for you today no matter how bewildered you are about your circumstances God knows what he's doing in your life Turn to Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Please, if you've got a Bible, please get your Bible and, and open it up with me. Don't be lazy. Get used to using your Bible. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an unexpected hand. And in some translations say, I know the plan I have for you. And, and God has a beautiful plan for you. And it, it might seem difficult. It might seem things have gone pear-shaped. Things have not gone right. It might seem that, that, that the issues that you're facing right now are too big for you. But right now God loves you and right now he has a plan and it's working out for your good. He says that in Romans 8, 28. So don't panic. Don't worry. Don't stress. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And you might be saying to God, God, I wish you'd do this, I wish you'd do that. God, I can't face this problem, I can't face that problem. Lord, it's too difficult for me. And God is saying to you, 
And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. It'll work out in the end. It'll come right in the end because God loves you and he has a plan for you. Yeah, but it's too difficult. I'm in too much pain. I can't cope with it. He has a plan for you. And though it is hurting, though it is painful, it will be okay. It is going to work out okay. There's going to be blessing at the end, my friend. Why? Because there's a plan. You can trust him with the plan. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. So be encouraged. He, God has a plan for you. Number two, be encouraged. God has given you resources for the journey. If you are on a marathon, if you're in a marathon and you're running 10, 15 miles, you need water. You need to have water. You need to be sustained by water. What was the resource that God wanted to resource Joshua with? Now, Joshua has two million people to feed. He's got two million people to feed. And he's got to go over the promise to the promised land. And he's got to face the great armies. What resource did God give Joshua? Let's have a look. Joshua chapter 1 verse 6. Be strong and of good courage, for unto the people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper therein so ever thou goest. The resource that God gave Joshua was the word of God was the word of God. You see, my friend, the problem with you right at this moment in time, and for all of us very often, is we, we're so occupied with the problem and the problems that we spend too little time in the word of God. And God is saying to you and me today, look, I've got it in hand. I know what your problem is. Just spend time in my word. Meditate on my word. You turn to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. You turn to the word of God. Hebrews uh, chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. The word of God will deal with your situation and show you how to go forward. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3. If you turn to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And then Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Psalm 109, Psalm 109, and, and then verses 105. We read these words. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You need to be meditating on the word of God. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2, it says, Desire the sincere milk of the word. And in, let's turn to James chapter 1 verse 21. James uh, chapter 1 verse 21. Where lay apart all filthiness and subfluity of naughtiness 
and receive with meekness the engrafted word. The engrafted word. God is saying to you today, look, you're preoccupied too much with this problem. And the more you are preoccupied with the problem, you're getting weaker and weaker and it's damaging you more. But if you meditate on my word, it brings healing and comfort and strength. It brings knowledge, it brings wisdom. So meditate on the word of God. One minister has said that when he's counseling people, they know the answer to their problem. The answer to their problem, they know it already. They know the word of God. The problem is they won't obey the word of God. And maybe in your life, many of the issues in your life are solvable right now if only you paid attention to the word of God and just put the Bible into practice. Then a lot of the issues in your life would be resolved but more than that, the next challenges and the challenges that you face, you need to be equipped to deal with them. And the only way you can deal with them is being in the Word of God. Uh, just a side remark here. There's a lot of attack in America and in and, uh, uh, and the UK uh, on the Word of God. I've been in two seminaries, two theological seminaries, uh, one evangelical, one liberal, uh, MA level. And I've sat with professors who've been clever, who've been... Uh, it, ripping the Bible to shreds, ripping the Bible apart. And I can tell you now, these people in the seminaries, these people who write their books attacking their Bible, I can guarantee you within 20 years their books are out of fashion. The Bar Ehrmans of this world and their books when they attack the Bible, the Rob Bells of this world when they attack the teaching of the Word of God, within 20, 30 years their books are out of fashion. They are no longer fashionable. But what will stay is the Word of God. The Word of God abides forever, my friend. Their books what do not convert drug addicts, do not convert alcoholics. Their books do not bring life to people. This book brings life. That's a testimony that it's the Word of God. So hold fast to the Word of God. And uh, you'll be blessed, my friend. So number three, be encouraged. God has given you great promises. So imagine the President of the United States or the Queen of England sends you a letter and says, I promise that you'll have a hundred thousand pound in your bank account. And they promised it. You know you can trust the President or the Queen if they make such a public promise. But God has given you precious promises, my friend, to hold on to. And it's like going to the bank, You get someone gives you a check and you go to the bank and you cash the check in. Promises of God are like a check. You can cash them in, you can say, Lord, you've promised that you'll bless me, you've promised me that you're with me. And Joshua had two million people to feed, he had wars to fight. And what did God give him? God gave him a promise. Have not I commanded thee, verse 9, Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whether thou goest. He's promised, I'm with you, I'm there with you. In the midst of the challenges that you face, of feeding two million people, and of crossing over and having these battles, I am with you, my friend. God has promised you that he'll strengthen you, he'll help you. If you turn to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah uh, chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 30. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. God's promising you there that if you wait upon him, he will give you strength. Isaiah 41 verse 10. Here's another promise. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That is a promise from God to you. 
cash it in. Say, Lord, I'm struggling right now. I'm holding on to this promise. You said I don't have to fear. That's Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Fear not, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am with thee. Thy God, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And then Isaiah 41 verse 13. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. And then if you turn to Philippians chapter 4. Verse 6 and 7. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Be careful for nothing but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. But the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So here the Lord is saying, bring your request to me and I'll answer and I'll, and I will provide for you. And then if you turn to 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So the Lord has promised that he will forgive us. You might feel guilty for whatever reason today. we come to the end. You might feel you sinned in some way, messed up. But God has promised that if you claim that promise, he will forgive you. So don't keep resurrecting the past. Don't keep wallowing in your failure. Just remember that God has promised you if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness so so let's just go back to Joshua uh, chapter 1 verse 9 have not I commanded thee be strong and of good courage be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the Lord thy God is with thee whether thou goest be encouraged today. Number one, God has a plan. It might not seem like it at the moment. It might seem a difficult path, but God has a plan and he's working it out for your good. He's, go he's going before you. He's preparing the way for you right now and it's going to be okay. It's going to be a good plan. Number two, God has given you the resources that you need and that resource is the word of God. So be encouraged. Be encouraged and stop worrying about the problem and start fixing your mind on the word of God. And number three, God has given you, be encouraged, God has given you promises. He promises Joshua that he'd be with him as he goes over the promised land. And as you go over the promise, to the promised land of heaven and glory, right now in life God is with you and he's fighting your battles and he will stand with you. Though men may leave you. Do you remember Paul? He said, all have, all have forsaken me, but God has stood with me. And God will stand with you, my friend, and he is with you right now. So don't be discouraged and keep going in Jesus' name. Amen. So, let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters today, they might feel discouraged and down, but I want to bring them before you right now. And I want to pray, dear God, that you would bless them and encourage them and comfort them and strengthen them. Fill them with your joy, fill them with your peace, fill them with your love. May they know your grace and may they know your love and may they know your peace and may they know your joy. Help them, Lord, in the midst of their trials. And Father, I pray that you would give them peace and you'd make a way for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I hope that's been a blessing to you. 
and uh, God bless you. I'm going to maybe just do some talking in a minute, uh, just doing a recap of what's been happening and hope that's a blessing to you. So God bless you and I hope this has been a blessing to you uh, and God bless. Please keep praying for me. I value your prayers and I'm going to talk about mission now. So God bless you.